everyone marisol here hope everyone's doing well um i just want to take a moment to put this video together on how to make masks that are in high demand right now i received an email from a friend who volunteers at hospice and they're in need of both face masks and gowns protective gowns if you are in the Tampa Bay area and you have access to a sewing machine and you'd like to help, please leave a comment and I will get you in touch with the volunteer coordinator over at LifePath. And thank you so much in advance for that. So um, they have fabrics that they will supply you with. Um, they're working on getting some more fabric donated and they're trying to find elastic, which right now it's kind of hard to find, but um, I've already made a few here um, with ties, self ties, because again, we don't have the elastic yet. The fabric that is being recommended is 100% cotton. So I'm going to show you really quickly how I drafted a very simple pattern according to the measurements and how to put the mask together. It takes approximately 20 minutes um, with the self ties. Again, if you would like to help, let me know and I will get you in touch with the right person. Stay safe out there. And thank you to all the nurses, all the doctors, all the healthcare personnel out there. Stay safe. Thank you for what you do. All right, let's get started. So we're going to create a mask that's nine inches by six inches, which is what Life Path has requested. Now, because we're going to draft half of the pattern, it's going to be four and a half inches by six inches so the six inches is basically going to be the area here the side is where the cheek kind of is where the ties are going to go and then we're going to measure four and a half inches over and this is again going to be come half of the pattern so we're basically drawing a rectangle to start off with and then we're going to add a quarter of an inch seam allowance to this. This line here becomes the part where the nose to the chin seam line is going to go. So let's go ahead and add a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And that's going to go all the way around the pattern piece. And then once we finish, here, adding all of the seam allowance, we're going to curve the seam line that covers the nose down to the chin. We're curving it a little bit because it just fits better and it gives it a, a little bit of a curvature to, to fit that part of the face. And you can eyeball it. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to go down a little bit on the side. That's where it ends up kind of like between the ear and the cheek. And we're going to contour it a little bit just to, again, fit the face a little bit better. And you can just eyeball it. Now on the side here, uh, Life Path has requested three pleats, which is on the side of the face where the ties are going to go. Um, and make them about an inch or so and just make some air so you know which way they want the pleats to face downward. So that's what that's about. So now that we're done with that, we're just going to cut everything out. And then once we're done cutting our pattern out, we can start cutting our fabric. So first we're going to fold the fabric. The fabric's already folded once, just like it normally is. But then I'm folding it an additional two times so that I can cut things out a little bit quicker. In this way, I am cutting six pieces out at once. So I'm going to pin the pattern down. I'm going to cut. And I'm going to cut through all, all six layers, basically. Once I have that, I have six pieces, which is three pairs. And then I'm going to start cutting out my strips. They have to be 16 inches long by two inches wide. And I'm going to cut it on the bias. So I'll take the marking on my ruler, line it up with my edge on the 45 degree angle. And that gives me my bias strip. I'm going to mark 16 inches 
long by two inches wide and I'm gonna cut that strip out. The reason why we're doing it on the bias is it because it gives it a little bit of elasticity and since we don't have elastic, at least it'll allow uh, the person to tie it nice and snug around their head. So in order to fold these, to stitch them, you're gonna fold it in half lengthwise and you're gonna press it along that long edge. Then you're gonna open it up and then you're gonna fold each raw edge into that folded mark you just made with the iron. Once you're done with one side, you're gonna flip it over and you're gonna iron the other side. So they're basically the two raw edges are meeting in the middle. Then once you're done ironing, ironing that all the way up the length, you're gonna fold that in half so that the raw edges are just uh, inside of the strip itself. And you're gonna iron that one more time just to get everything. Now, one of the ed ends of the tie has to be finished. At least I like it to be finished. So I'm gonna open it up, I'm gonna fold a quarter of an inch and I'm gonna tuck it in and I'm gonna refold the end just the way it was before. So now I'm ready to start making my ties. Now on the edge that is unfinished, I'm gonna start stitching there. So I'm going to line up the needle at the very, very edge and I'm gonna start stitching. I'm gonna back stitch at the very beginning and then I'm gonna follow the edge just a scant eighth of an inch or however close you can get it all the way down and then you're gonna pivot at the very end this is the end that was folded in nice and neat so you can take it to the very end as much as you can you're gonna raise your presser foot you're gonna pivot it over and then you're gonna finish that end there back stitching a couple times if you can and now your first tie is done it's ready to ready to go all right so let's start putting the mask together we're gonna stitch the seam that goes around the nose we're gonna back stitch at the beginning at the end. And then once we have that, we're gonna attach the ties. You're gonna put one at every corner and just align it about a quarter of an inch down, uh, flush to the edge. And you're just basically stitching the ties in first. So you just back stitch to make it nice and secure. You're gonna move on to the next one. Again, about a quarter of an inch away from the bottom edge because that's your seam allowance. And you're gonna back stitch again to make it nice and secure. And then just finish the other two. And then that just gives you the four ties on the mask. And I just like to back stitch a couple of times just to make it nice and secure. And hopefully this will be a mask that lasts a while and they can just keep reusing them. So once you have your final tie sewn in, you're gonna take all of the, the ties together and you're gonna just kind of pull them into the middle, try to get them away from the, from the edges as much as possible because you don't wanna accidentally stitch them while you're stitching around the outside of the mask. So you're basically stitching your outer fabric to your inner fabric because this is double the double-sided mask. And you're gonna make sure that when you're pinning all the way around, you're not catching any of the ties. So just kind of make feel around and make sure that you're not catching anything. And just pin as much as you need to pin just to make sure that you get you keep everything out of the way. So once we're done pinning, now we can start sewing all the way around the edges, leaving an opening about an inch and a half to two inches. So you're gonna sew a quarter of an inch all the way around the mask, making sure that you're not catching those ties that are tucked inside. So when, when you stitch around the edges, you're gonna come to each corner and then you're going to make sure everything is nice and even. Now remember, you have your tie right there on the edge. So you're gonna stop a quarter of an inch away from the other end. You're gonna raise your presser foot. You're gonna pivot 
and you're going to start sewing down the other side. You're going to continue doing that all the way around the entire mask. Just tucking in those ties the whole time to make sure that you don't stitch over one accidentally. Here's another corner. Go down to about a quarter of an inch. Raise your foot, pivot, and come over to the other side. Now this is where we're gonna stop. So once we get to an area, we're gonna back stitch just to reinforce that because we're gonna use that opening to turn the mask inside out. And sometimes it's easy if you can just grab one of those ties and just use that to pull every, everything through. It's gonna take a little, a little effort, especially if you don't leave enough of an opening you're going to push everything out, pull on the ties to kind of get those corners out, roll the seams as much as you can, and you're going to press that flat. Once you have it pressed flat, you're going to have your little opening that you need to finish. Now that's just going to end up closing up as you top stitch the edge all the way around the mask. So once you have everything nice and pressed before you start stitching all the way around you're going to make your your little pleats your tucks um, you can eyeball this um, and just start off with one side make sure that the pleats or the tucks are facing down downward and just make three of them as even as you can and this gives the mask room to expand around the, the chin and the nose area. Once you have one side done, then you can just kind of fold the mask over and use that as a guide for the first, the first pleat. And then you can just pin the other side. Now, once everything is pinned out, now you're going to take it back to the machine and you're going to stitch all the way around. I'm basically using the edge of my presser foot um, all the way around and I'm pivoting at the corner just like I did when I was sewing it together. And then I take out my pins as I get to each pleat so that they don't open up on me. And I just carefully stitch over them just to make sure they stay closed. And then once you get to the end, stop about a quarter of an inch away or a little bit closer because you want to make sure that you close that opening. So you want to make sure that you catch the fabric that you fold it in. Like I said, I, I try to use the edge of the presser foot and keeps it a little bit under a quarter of an inch and then I'm just carefully stitching over the pleats making sure they stay in place pivot at the corner and then just finish it off back stitching when you're done and now you can press the pleats down if you want and that's it thank you so much for watching